in. Welcome into Check, Please, our weekly check-in at DC Prime. Not all stakes are equal. We're going to have some maybe some steak tonight. Julie Donaldson here with you as always. But I'm joined with some guys you might be familiar with. i got two legends sitting at the table here. Joe Theismann, Doug Williams, both have won Super Bowls. I can go through all the, your accolades, but that would take up the whole show. Uh, gentlemen, since we're here, I, I do want to get to some storytelling because both of you played with Joe Gibbs. Tell me one of your favorite Joe Gibbs stories. Well, there's there's a number of them. Um, let me let me let me spin forward to today, and then I'll go back to when you know Coach first took over. Is obviously I have a I was I'm a record holder in the National Football League. Not too many people can say that. I hold the record for the shortest net punt in the history of the game. <laughs> it, was, it was against the Chicago Bears. <laughs> so, Which Ron Rivera was on that team, right? He was on that team, yes. right? Yes. So, um, one yard? One yard. One yes. net yard. Got one net yard. One net. Held the record for a short period of time. Something un- to hang your hat on. Until Sean Landetta, later on that year, at the same spot on the field in Soldiers Field, missed the ball completely, but they gave him a minus six. So right now, he's officially the record holder. <laughs> I personally claim it. Um, so... I, you know, I, Joe and I communicate, you know, every two, three months, we just catch up with one another. I love the man, compl- love the man tremendously. So I, I get this voicemail from him. He goes, and, and this is what he sounds like. He goes, hey, you out back working on your punts? <laughs> he's got this, he's got this giddy little laugh and we're always busting on one another. But there's a whole story around my entire punt, which I don't know if we have. You know, if this is a four-hour show, it could do it. But um, it, Joe and I, so Jeff Hayes gets hurt. He's our kickoff guy and our punter. We're up 10 nothing. We kick the ball. G- Willie Galt runs it back for a touchdown. It's now 10 to 7. But Jeff hurts his thigh. He can't punt. Joe's standing there going, what am I going to do? I thought I walked up. I said, I can punt. He said, you can what? I said, I can punt. How hard can it be? You drop the four, ball, boom, gone, no problem. Guys will cover it. He says, fine. Next time, just, just go ahead. Next time we punt, you punt. I go running on the field. Well, we get the ball on the 13-yard line, run a running play, get to the 15, and I'll fast forward. So we wind up, it's fourth down, and it's fourth down from fourth down and eight. And um, I look to the sidelines, and, you know, Joe is, the offense is running off, the def, uh, the special teams are running on. All the guys are going, hey, Joe, kick it right, kick it right. I'm going, hey, just get it back here, man. I'm on the goal line at Soldier's <laughs> Field. I'm looking up going, Mom, look at me. I'm a punter in the National Football League. How great is it? And you know, because truth- you weren't a quarterback yet. No, yeah, I was. I was the quarterback of the, I was the quarterback. Oh. But I, but the one thing that crossed my mind is Danny White punted for the Dallas he Cowboys did. and was their quarterback. I said, Why if not? Danny White can do it, you can I can do. do it. So I get the snap from center and so all the guys are saying, kick it right. I say, hey, don't worry about it. And, and I, I take them. And all of a sudden, the world goes into slow motion. It's like I'm approaching the ball. And I lay the ball out. And I raise my foot. And it's pow. And the ball goes flying off my foot. Hung in the air. Hung in the air. Went 16 yards. Now, I start. So they get the ball on the, like the 16-yard line. Right. Touchdown. So I walk to the sidelines. Now, Joe, at that time, the coaches were connected with wires. They weren't wireless. So he's sort of walking towards me. And I'm sort of walking like this. Like, I'm starting to bend a little bit left because I know how much wire he's got. Okay, because I know he can only go so far. So I get to the bench. I sit down. Bang, they score right away. So now I walk up to him. And he's got, he's got the play sheet in front of him. You know, coach had his play sheet. He had those big old glasses that he wore. He's got the play sheet. So I said, what do you want to run? Very serious. He says, I want to run... Uh, Spread right, short motion, 60 outside. I said, great. And then I started laughing. I said, um, do you want me to punt again? <laughs> he, he looked, he, he put the clipboard on, he looked at me and he pushed his glasses up and he went, I never want to hear the word punt come out of your mouth again. <laughs> and so I retired with my one yard average. But I, that was the experiences we had. He was going to bench me. We're 0-5 in 1981 when he takes over. He's going to bench me. I drive to his house. Right. Because my job was yeah. important to me. So I drove to his house. But he used to, um, we, our meeting started at 7.30 in the morning. And I'm, I'm, I, I sort of stay on a high. I mean, life is so much fun. I just bounce off of walls, right? So Joe comes, he slept at Redskin Park. He come walking out with his coffee cup at 7.15 in the morning. And I'm going, hey, coach, how's it going? And he, he turned around, he walked right back into his office. <laughs> For another half an hour, he would go, hey, where are you going? It was always to put it down. But there's, I mean, there are so many stories um, about his uniqueness as a coach. I think his greatest quality was his selection of people on his coaching staff. I, I believe that in leadership. It, it isn't, 
it isn't necessarily what that leader can do, but who are the people that you surround yourself with? And we see it now with Ron Rivera. And you know, you know the, the coaching staff that has been put together here has been handpicked. He, he has a familiarity with them. He understands them. And I mean, but those were, you know, I was sort of indoctrinated him into head coaching. I'm sure he sat there some nights and going, what did I get myself into with this guy? <laughs> it, it was uh, like story after story, experience after experience, experience with John Riggins when he flew out to Centralia, Kansas to see John. To bring me in, huh? Well, <laughs> yeah. I, w- I want to get to some maybe some Riggins story in a minute, but you, you did win Super Bowl 17. Let's fast forward to Super Bowl 22. Why not? Well, you, you had gifts as well. I did. You know, and fortunately, you know, like I said, I had it before Joe, but Joe really had him as the head coach. I had him as an assistant coach. And, um, you know, Joe going to always be dear to me, the way things happen in Tampa, because when he was in Tampa, I know if get Bill Nelson was my quarterback coach. Bill was loud and, you know, and something happened. I just got there. My first day of practice, something went wrong, and, and he hollered at me, you know, like, rah, rah, rah. And I just stood there and I looked down the field. Joe was running, charging down the field and got right in Coach Faye right on the field. I'm standing like this. He said, don't you holler at him. Not one more time. He got to learn like everybody else. I said, wow. And then every night after that <clears throat> training camp, you know, two a day, we went two a day was two a day. Yeah, not like, yeah. Not like shorts <laughs> and a so baseball you're in full hat. pads yeah. and you're going at yeah. it. Yeah. Right. I went home with Coach Gibbs. When he got out of meeting, I got in his car, drove to his house, sat at his table with Pat and his two boys, bless his soul, Carl and, and JD, and, and we ate dinner. When, they, when we ate dinner, him and I went, and we went through the playbook every night in training camp. And, you know, I never forgot that, no will. And then when I got the call to come up here after Joe, unfortunately, had gotten hurt, he asked me, he said, um, I'm just calling Douglas. He don't somebody call me Douglas. You know, everybody else call me Doug. <laughs> Douglas, and I say, I say, he said, yeah, coach, how you doing? He said, I just called and I just want to know, could you be the backup? I said, coach, I said, let me say this. I can be any up that you want me to be because <laughs> I don't have a job. <laughs> Wait, up. This isn't when you were teaching school? <laughs> no, no, that, not, that was before the draft. Oh, okay, this, this, okay, this is okay. after the, U, the USFL had folded. But, you know, and when I came up here, I know we were playing in uh, Green Bay and doing warm-up. You know, my, I almost froze to death. Pre-game warm-up, my hand was froze. And he said, he looked at me, he said, hold I hope I don't have to play him. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Joe, Joe Gibbs, me, I think I, we got him at the, at the Joe had tamed him a little bit. And he was a different guy. Me and, me and Mark had him at a different time. So it was great. He learned. He, yeah. He'd learned. He'd learned how to be a head coach. I, I think that's one of the things that we're. One of the things that's unique to society today is everybody expects instant results from everything that's going on. But our business is a business of process. Right. Whether it's coaching or whether it's playing, you have to learn the position. We talked about it with Taylor. Right. He's going through the process now. Each week he's modifying. I've known Tom Brady for a number of years. You know, Tom's in his 21st year, 2021st year, and he's still learning. Yeah. If you sit down with Tom right now, he would tell you that there are things that he has to continue to learn. And it's the process. And it, w- it, it was the same way with Joe. I mean, I mean, he had he had me. You know, I had restaurants, TV shows. Heck, I owned the Redskin Report. I owned the Redskin newspaper at that time. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was crazy. But um, it was it was just a question of guys getting on the same page. I'll spin forward real quick to where we are today. Scott Turner and Taylor Heineke are now getting on the same page. And and Doug knows this, when a coach calls a play, he calls it for a specific reason. And what I mean by that is, if it's third down and six, he'll call it for you to pick up the first down, so he calls the route accordingly. If it's third down and one, and yeah. he's thinking about going one on fourth down, he may put something in there for a big play. Take the shot. Mm-hmm. So, We've but, seen that. But, those are, but those are unspoken words. Right. You just understand right. that after your discussions. Right. And, uh, and I, there isn't, I've been, as long as I've been around football, I mean, in professional football, you know, I just, I was, I've been at, gone now 36 years. Um, and I played 15. So for, you know, 50 plus years being around this game, never seen anybody with the ability 
to be able to orchestrate and create plays in the red zone like Joe Gibbs. And, and who can make phenomenal? And who can make all the right decision coming out of halftime? I, you know, if he go in halftime and things ain't working, I can promise you he's one guy can and come we, back. We never added. We adjust. never. We never added. That's the no. thing about it's interesting. We deleted stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You go in he, he didn't say let's do this. He says let's no. take this out, this out, this out, and and actually. I don't know if he was this way with you, but he, he, people said, did Coach and you ever discuss plays? No, he told me what to do and I did it. <laughs> no, I mean, at the end of the day. It wasn't any, let's sit down. Here's some plays. What you do you go, think of You it? go in on Wednesday, you go in there and you got a board full of plays. You go out there and you walk through, you run the plays and practice, and the next morning he cut back what he, what he thought would look good, what he didn't look good. He take it out and you got this up there, and by the time you get to Friday, you got your game plan. Yeah. The game plan worked. Yeah. Uh, and, I thought it did. Yeah. It did. It worked. worked well, look, he, he won three Super Bowls for the Washington football team with three different quarterbacks. We're missing Mark Rippon at this table. Three different running backs. Three different running backs <laughs> as yeah. well. Well, but Joe hit something. But yet the, the line was always relatively the same, right, for the yeah, most part. We were lucky that way. But, but Joe said something. Coach Gibbs picked the good coaching staff, mm -hmm. but he also picked players yeah. that he knew that had the character and the will and the fortitude to work hard and come to play every week. Well, that's why I had to go to his house. He just didn't think I was committed to football because I did have other things. And I basically sat there with, in his living room. This is after we lose to San Francisco. This isn't like a day off. This is, he's exhausted. I've been beat up. We're 0-5. I go in, I sit down and, and it's like, we need to talk. Uh, I, I guarantee you he was the most stunned human being in the world when he opened that door and saw my face there. <laughs> so here I am. Who does that these days? Yeah, what's, Nobody. what's there? It's a testament to knowing what you want, the situation you're in, and not being afraid to go fight for it. And it, so. it, it coincidentally worked out. We, we changed our philosophy. Mm -hmm. We started to run the ball. When Joe first came here, he came from the I Don know. Coriel's oh, offense. Yeah. We were hey, Eric Coriel. Yeah. I, you know, I had... I was, I was leading the league in passes attempted. I was leading the league in passes intercepted. I was, you know, we were throwing it all over the place, but we weren't the San Diego Chargers. We were the Washington Redskins at that time, and we were going to build this football team. You know, when, when Joe Bugle walked in and talked to him about this big, huge guy called Joe Jacoby, <laughs> you know, Coach Gibbs said to Bugs, he says, man, he said, look, you know, we've got enough defensive tackles. We yeah. don't need them. No, no, no. <laughs> he's, he's, he's an offensive tackle. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And, he, and there's a guy who, who really, really should be in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. And I hope at some point that wrong gets righted. Uh, but, you know, just the, the time I spent with him and the time I spent learning from him, what a great teacher he was, too. Concepts and philosophies about the game of football. Um, he saw the game differently than all of us. He was ahead. Well, yeah, he yeah. really was. He, he, he was ahead of most people. Well, I mean, think about it. He never had the same formation from week to week. Three weeks, he wasn't going to run the same thing. It was every four weeks. But the, the plays was the same. You know, you. I mean, I played when Joe played. I mean, when you think about the receivers I had, they all played same position anytime. You know, now you got guys who can only play X. Right. I can only play but Z. We're also saying that's why Coach Rivera loves the flex guys, the guys that can play multiple positions, so you can do just that. Most coaches kind of do from on, that, Most so. coaches do on offense. They want right. they want to be able to have someone and that can be And it keeps things. the defense on their heels, so Absolutely. they don't know exactly where either that's of you right. guys are going. Look, uh, we still have more to get to here on Check, Please. So when we come back, a, a little more of story time as well. And look, since they both won Super Bowls, we've watched them, we've seen them. But maybe what are some of the most memorable things that happened off of the field during the Super Bowl runs. Stay with us here at Chuck Please. DC has a new home for your favorite songs from the 80s. Tom Petty. Def Leppard. Nobody plays more 80s. Bon Jovi. Prince. 94.7. Madonna. Bruce Springsteen. The Drive. Now there's a way to make supporting your favorite restaurant even better. Introducing the Grubhub Guarantee. It's our promise to make sure your food is just right by delivering it on time within the delivery window and for the lowest price compared to other apps. Or you'll get back at least $5 in perks. That way you can experience your food just like the restaurant intended. That's the Grubhub Guarantee. Gambit DC. The world-class sports betting app and website. Gambit DC will be there for the first pitch, the first slam dunk, 
bet on your favorite sports and teams, collegiate and professional. There are multiple ways to bet. Spreads, money line, over under. Want to win big? Try a parlay. Want to be a part of the action? Try in-game betting. It's easy, it's secure, and it's at your fingertips. Gambit DC. It's sports, only better. Powered by DC Lottery. GambitDC.com. Now there's a way to make supporting your favorite restaurant even better. Introducing the Grubhub Guarantee. It's our promise to make sure your food is just right by delivering it on time within the delivery window and for the lowest price compared to other apps. Or you'll get back at least $5 in perks. That way you can experience your food just like the restaurant intended. That's the Grubhub Guarantee. It's about grit. It's about guts. It's about winning. It's about where we come from and what we can be. It's about D.C. and celebrating our football team. With the Washington football team scratcher from the D.C. Lottery, you can win up to $50,000, as well as some exciting second chance opportunities. And you can continue your winning experience at DCILottery.com. With live betting on FanDuel Sportsbook, you can play here as fast as they play here all game long. Get goosebumps over bootlegs. Adrenaline rushes over rushes. Yes. Turn garbage time into greatness and make every moment of every game a big one. With live betting on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, make every moment more even after kickoff. New customers get a risk-free bet up to a thousand bucks. FanDuel, make every moment more. Let me go to the Super Bowl games. Uh, it's been a long time since Washington has been able to experience that kind of magic and that energy. And, and we've seen the parade, we've seen the pictures, we've seen the games. But what is, I'd like to get each of your take on what is your favorite play from your Super Bowl game, Doug? For my Super Bowl, it had to be the, the 54 yarder to Ricky Sanders. And that's what 60 counter trade pass. Fake, you know, I'm, I'm looking at Tony Lilly right now coming up because we was running the ball pretty decent at that time. And Tony Lilly came up to force the run, and Ricky, you know, came across the formation in the zoom, went up the field, boom, and next thing you know, he's behind Tony Lilly. You can see, he said, you can see Tony Lilly saying this, he said, oh, shoot. <laughs> you know he couldn't get back. And he turned, and Ricky was gone. Yeah. What about for you, Joe? Uh, it has to be. Uh, it has to be the moment when I knocked the ball away from Kim Bo Camper. Um, <laughs> we were uh, we were backed up. We were down at the time. We were backed up. We ran a little quick hitch. That's all it was. Was it was a zero route, five yard turn, and I remember dropping back and they rolled to Alvin on the right, Garrett, and I turned around and I was going to fire it back out to Charlie Brown on the left side, and Kim Bo Kim not went up in the air and knocked the ball, and the ball is. It's literally just, I could read, you know, Wilson on. I could read, I could count every stitch and I could see the ball and everything went into slow motion again in my life. And he's got his arms out and Wait this is right on the goal line. And I, I couldn't get to it. And I just lunged at the last minute. And I managed to get my arm in between it, strip the ball away. And the both of us sat in the end zone looking at one another. <laughs> and I went, that was close. <laughs> Kim Bo Camper was one of my very first jobs in this business. Oh Every gosh. time I tell him I'm working with Joe Theismann, he's like, do you have to remind me? And I still go to Kim's <laughs> restaurant. I still go to Kim's restaurant Fantastic down in Fort Fantastic restaurant Lauderdale. down in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, yes, great guy. But that uh, was, he's a good guy. That moment was, um, you know, I guess you could say yeah. of, of, of playing 15 years of quarterback professionally, the most outstanding moment in my life. Yeah was as a defensive back. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the play defensive there back. Play defensive right. back, yeah. There you go. Uh, again, what, so you've been a, a punter, a return guy, quarterback, and, and defensive back. There, there, yeah. there we go. There we go. The yeah. jack the of all trades. Remember, he go to Coach trades. House, too. The <laughs> counsel him about him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. I stole um, a bus once so, in training camp. Oh, where I... Oh, what? That was some, that's another story. Wait, the bus drivers were getting something to eat. This was in 83. Now, we won the championship in 82. So all of okay. a sudden, you feel a little bit like uh, yeah, you you're bulletproof. You you're this. bulletproof, yeah, yeah. okay? So, you know, it didn't take much for the guys to encourage me. So the, our, our bus drivers <laughs> are up in Carlisle, and they're getting something to eat. And Joe cut practice short, like by 45 minutes. So we're, you know, we're just sitting on the bus. I said, man, hey, come on, somebody, you know, come here. I said, I'll go. Okay. So I hop in this car, and I'm driving the bus. 
I, mean, I took out a, I took out one of those uh, street signs. I, they're they're very difficult to turn around corners. I know like they're that. hard. It's... So we we come pulling up, and about an hour later, the bus drivers, they're they're screaming and yelling, "Where's the bus? Where's the bus? Where's the bus?" We don't know. Somebody just drove it back to the dormitory. That was we have no idea who it was. I finally have admitted it after all these years. You admitted it. It was me. <laughs> I took the bus. Guilty as charged. <laughs> Never stolen a bus in my life. Um, but I do want to get to, uh, you know, as we're about to wrap the show here, I do want to get to maybe we got your favorite football memories uh, or moments or play on the field. What about during the Super Bowl for you? Maybe a favorite memory or moment off the field for the Super Bowl. Well, for me, you know, I wanted to make it clear, you know, being, being my first time in the Super Bowl, and um, everything, everything was about black quarterback. Mm -hmm. and, and I say to myself that I wasn't going to get caught up in it, and which I did. And, and my thing was, whatever the NFL wanted me to do from a media standpoint, I was going to do that. Anything about the guys running around the hotel trying to get a story or what have you, I wasn't going to talk to any reporter. And, and, and I did that. Because, you know, when I got to the hotel, I went straight to my room. Unfortunately, you know, everybody else was out, whatever. And I had a teammate, Jimmy Giles, down in Tampa. And he came, he said, hey, man, let's go to dinner. I said, no, man, I don't want to be bothered with them reporters. He said, I'll tell you what, I got them. And he came and got me, and I just walked right behind him. He said, nah, he's not doing this. You know, because everybody <laughs> wanted to talk about the black quarterback thing. And, and I, didn't, I didn't come to San Diego to be the black quarterback. I came as the quarterback, quarterback of mm -hmm. the Washington Redskins at that time. Yeah, I, well, and you also have somebody blocking for you. That's right. <laughs> what about for you, Joe? You know, it was the, it was really the night before um, the Super Bowl out in Pasadena. They took us out to this little hotel in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Burt Reynolds had become a friend. And I remember spending an hour and a half on the phone in my room just just talking. Because, you know, I mean, he was at Florida State. He was a running back, loved football, was a passionate football guy. And we became friends. I, I did a movie with him. He invited me as a part of it. And I just sat and it was it was very calming because I don't know how well you slept the night before the Super Bowl. I did. Well, you know, I had a root canal the night before the Super did Bowl. Did you really? Yeah. Four hours. Oh, my God. Saturday morning. But you know how he oh fixed my. it? Bag full of Hershey Kisses, Hershey right? Hershey Kisses. I ate the whole bag. Little did we know that chocolate could do that. I'm telling you. I woke, <laughs> up, the, <laughs> you. woke up the next morning, no pain. Uh, and I thank Hershey Kisses for the rest there of my been, life. There just has been a medical breakthrough <laughs> right here. All. Look out. <laughs> but, uh, no, I just, Bert and I spent an hour and a half on the phone just talking, and it, it really relaxed me and calmed me. I, I didn't sleep real well. I slept for about four hours soundly, and then I got up about, obviously, on West Coast time anyway. And we only had a week to get ready, not two. We had two. So right. we went right from the Dallas Cowboy game, flew out to Pasadena, and went right into practice and right into the game. And um, it just sort of calmed me down a bit. But that was... It's a very fond memory of a great guy. What I learned from this, Burt Reynolds and a bag of Hershey Kisses. <laughs> <laughs> they go together. Nachos. Better with Pepsi. Ah. <gasps> Who was that? Oh. Did you hear that? Oh, anybody <laughs> home? Santa? Yes? Santa! Are you stuck? I am. <laughs> oh, no. I better call someone. Yeah. Hey, Santa? Yes? Did you remember the scratch-offs? Check your stocking. Oh, yes. Thank you, Santa. <laughs> someone called the fire department? What do you got? Stuck Santa. Are those holiday scratch-offs? Yeah. Make it merrier. Give Maryland Lottery holiday scratch-offs. help here. DC has a new home for your favorite songs from the 80s. Tom Petty. Def Leppard. Nobody plays more 80s. Bon Jovi. Prince. 94.7. Madonna. Bruce Springsteen. The Drive. Veterans, you may have earned a variety of VA benefits. Did you know VA can help you further your education and pursue professional training? The Home Loan Guarantee Program can help you buy, repair, or adapt a home. VA provides housing support if you find yourself homeless or at risk of homelessness. And don't forget world-class health care. Learn more about these and other VA benefits. Visit choose.va.gov.
My work has been viewed by a hundred million people. My work helps save lives. My work has gone platinum. My work gives people hope. I work at FedEx. Take your career to the next level with one of our many open positions. It's about grit. It's about guts. It's about winning. It's about where we come from and what we can be. It's about DC and celebrating our football team. With the Washington football team scratcher from the DC Lottery, you can win up to $50,000, as well as some exciting second chance opportunities. And you can continue your winning experience at DCILottery.com. Now there's a way to make supporting your favorite restaurant even better. Introducing the Grubhub Guarantee. It's our promise to make sure your food is just right by delivering it on time within the delivery window and for the lowest price compared to other apps. Or you'll get back at least $5 in perks. That way you can experience your food just like the restaurant intended. That's the Grubhub Guarantee. on check please and I'm talking with two of the best quarterbacks to ever play for the Washington football team and while we've talked a lot about the current state of the team and also their times playing with the team I want to know about the women behind the men this is presented by fresh vine wine as we know you don't get there alone gentlemen there's always somebody standing behind you or maybe helping you through uh, this so as fresh vine wine presents this for us Doug let me start with you a woman that maybe had an impact on your football career? Well, there's no doubt, it was my mom. You know, my, my, my mom would not fly anywhere. And uh, when I played in Tampa, my mom would catch the Greyhound bus and take that two day ride, two and a half day ride to Tampa. The only time she ever flew in her life was, I had back surgery here and the Super Bowl. You know, but, but at that time, she wanted to get there. And that's, and that's how she got there. So my mom, no doubt. More than anything, in this crazy, hectic mm -hmm. world, I know when things, when I, when I got crazy, and I get with my mother, everything just sort of calmed down Calm a little down. bit. And that's what moms are good for. That's, that's, that's what mothers do. That's, that's, that's exactly job. right. That's yeah. what my moms are good for. My mom was, my mom was one of my hardest critics. Yep. Uh, so cheers to the moms. Uh, thanks to Fresh Fine Wine. Here's to the moms. Thank you so much, Joe Theismann. Thank you so much, Doug Williams. Thanks. And thank you so much for joining us here on Check. Please, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.